Alright guys, my name is Meta Goblin, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to remaster Classic WoW with add-ons, graphic options, and some camera tweaks as well. Just before jumping guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch if you want to catch any of my live streams. So the footage you're seeing right now is totally taken from the game, it isn't edited in any way in Sony Vegas or anything like that, as you can see I'm moving the mouse around right now. This isn't like photoshopped, it's, it's nothing like that. And because YouTube actually limits the amount of megapixels actually, you know, I can render in a video and how it like encodes it, but this, what you're seeing right now will probably look actually even better basically on your own computer and on, on, on your own version of World of Warcraft. So let me show you a number of things that I do uh, to basically make my game look, you know, basically infinitely better than the default settings than what World of Warcraft will basically enable, well, allow you by default. So, because obviously I have uh, my graphics on ultra right now, as you can see, but we can take it way above ultra if we if we want to. So first thing I'm going to do is come to a graphics menu here, and you're basically going to pump everything up to ultra. However, there are a number of tweaks that we're going to make to the graphics menu, which just push it a little bit further. And also, we're going to be talking about some console commands, which again, you know, push the graphics beyond ultra settings essentially. If you ever have issues with you know FPS, the first thing to take down would be the shadows. Shadows are generally just the most graphic dependent kind of quality of, you know, graphic settings. So it's alter the graph uh, shadow quality before you alter anything else. But nonetheless, what you want to do when you come to the advanced menu is come to MSAA here and make sure you select 16 times depth. And what will happen is you go to this menu and you have custom anti-aliasing or whatever you call that word. The next thing you can do is increase your contrast. So if you have your contrast, on like the default setting here as you can see it kind of this is kind of like the generic setting for contrast that most people probably have it set to but if you increase your contrast what it basically does is it to well it to totally changes how the game looks by basically making the colors look a little bit more vibrant and colorful so I like to have it kind of between 70 and 80 I like to experiment with it um, you know when you go to dark areas like Darkshire Con higher contrast settings may become a little bit of an issue because it might be difficult for you to actually see things but mess about with what contrast you prefer you know you may even prefer it like a little bit lower but it definitely makes the game look way more colorful before I move on to talking about UI there's just one point I want to make that I've only just realized if you increase your contrast settings when you're in areas like this like for instance inside a castle or a dark area the game looks way way ridiculously more realistic and I'm absolutely loving it because like I can barely see that dude over there and if this this looks really realistic I'm actually quite surprised how good this looks obviously if you want to increase your you know immersive experience I would disable characters like names displaying above enemy NPCs or unless you click them but yeah anyway moving on so let's move on to console commands which are basically going to push the graphics beyond the ultra settings there's only a few things that you can tweak Mainly it's the ground clutter and the distance of the ground clutter and a little bit of view distance and you can tweak the shadows slightly. That's the, those are the main things that you can adjust. So this is the first macro here. I will have all the macros in the description. If I don't have them, you know, give me a slap on the wrist and remind me. Essentially this basically makes the ground clutter look a lot better. If you look at this macro here, this is basically a graphics low option. So if I press it on low, hopefully I won't pull that mongrel. If I push, push this on low, you can obviously see the massive difference that this makes. The main thing that it does is obviously increase the detail and the variety of grass on, well, or ground clutter, or basically that you can basically see. If I press the macro again, you can see more. And it's not just grass. If you, if I go over here, I'll show you something else. Like, if you, if you see these rocks here, the, those rocks will actually disappear as well. So it's not actually in, uh, exclusively for grass. It is like other effects as well and as you will notice if you look far into the distance let's look at the uh, keep well, I can't remember the name of that castle look at the castle in the distance basically if I press the low settings we can see less of that castle in the distance if we press the high settings we can see more of that castle in the distance the next macro we're going to be looking at is just a quick shadow macro so I have it on the lowest settings at the moment and as you can see the shadow is basically just one big black kind of splodge. If you press this macro, it changes it slightly to basically have little gaps in it and little indents to make it, basically make it more realistic. And it, as you will probably, if you look close enough, it will 
more closely follow the actual shape of the ob object that it's actually shadowing rather than it just being kind of like a random placeholder shadow. Like you can even see, if you look very closely, you can actually see my horse's tail. If I zoom in a little bit, like you can actually see the like detail of a horse's tail. So that's basically what that macro does. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the camera option. So many people don't know this, but you can actually enable the action cam in Classic WoW, even though it's supposed to be like a retail exclusive feature. For some reason, I think it's because Classic WoW actually uses the Legion client, and Legion client introduced the action cam. So this is just a strange thing that you can actually just basically enable in the game. I'll show you the macros here. You've got slash console action cam full, and then I've got one that basically just turns it off so it goes totally back to normal and you can press it back on like this. So yeah, it's pretty cool how you, I've always really liked this action cam. It's definitely pretty good for more solo content when you're out in the world doing leveling or just, you know, doing some exploration, just whatever you're doing. It is probably not best to use in raids and stuff like that because you can't see your positioning very well, but I mean, I'll show you what it looks like because I just, I just think the action cam looks really cool. Like if I just pull this mob here, excuse the fact that I have no crossbow skill. Um, and it feels like, it just makes the game feel totally different with a very simple camera tweak. It almost feels like you're playing um, like the third person view of Skyrim instead of like World of Warcraft. So that's something that I really like. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is my UI and just, you know, basically all the add-ons I have downloaded in general. So the main UI that I have downloaded right now is actually called Guild Wars 2 UI. It's probably why you're wondering why I recognised it. It's also very similar to the Diablo 3 interface as well. So the great thing about this interface is that it doesn't clog up your screen. It's very, very minimalistic. And the main way it does that is by putting your health bar down as a red circle at the bottom of the screen. It takes a while to get used to, I will admit. But once you get used to it, you, you it's basically like a situation where... Once you go black, you never go back, because I, I will never go back to the default, uh, you, you know, unit frame being displayed, like, you know, where my character is right now. Like, I much prefer having, like, a health bar down there as a little circle, because, again, it just saves so much space on the screen. For prim in raiding, I will need it for other things, but when I'm doing solo content and leveling stuff, it just makes the game look much better, because I can actually see the game, rather than it being covered by, you know, some irritating unit frame. Great thing about it is that it automatically hides bars when you're not in combat, which is another great feature so that you can see the actual world around you when you're, you know, exploring the world. Um, apart from that, it also has a mini map down here rather than up here, which is again a really good addition. However, there are a number of things that I have actually disabled, um, which I will I will show you right now. It has a settings menu straight here in the interface menu. There are a number of modules I have disabled, like I've disabled the chat window because I didn't like it too much, I prefer the default one. Uh, I've disabled buffs and debuffs. D buffs and debuffs, and buffs and debuffs. Sorry, they normally display around here, like basically above your like target frame. I didn't really like that too much, so I put buffs back in the top screen. And you also have an immersive questing window, which is something I'm definitely going to basically show right now. I've also disabled the group frames to the default ones because, again, the default one I don't have an issue with the default ones at all. But let me show you this interface a little bit more in action. Um, I've got combo points generating on the target rather than like they're going kind of going like across. By the way, the that little golden frame as well that's displaying like whether the target is elite or not as well. But anyway, let me show you the immersive questing pane, which is basically exactly like the immersion add-on which I've displayed on my channel before, and it's very similar to the Guild Wars 2 interface as well, and it also takes some sounds from the Guild Wars 2 interface as well, which, which again is a pretty cool feature. So I'm just going to show you what accepting a quest looks like with this add-on. If you press the quest here, it will basically display this uh, kind of like immersion menu with your character model and the, you know, target character model. Having like a mini conversation, you, you click the screen and it goes to the next dialogue option and shows you more information as the, you know, from the quest text basically. I'll talk you through some other cool elements of this add-on. So you obviously notice that the micro bar is in the top left right here. This is basically to minimise space taken up like by the bottom of the screen so it isn't too clogged up and obviously the screen is more clear. You basically have um, well, one thing I will show you actually is the character menu because the character menu is pretty good. The reason why I disabled it is because I couldn't see my actual stats. So I'll show you that very quickly. So this is the character menu. They've made it basically look exactly how it does in Guild Wars 2. 
you can select all your skills down here and the main thing I really like is the reputation menu this is pretty cool it's a great way to keep a track of all your reputations and um, you've got your talent menu here as well but I have most of these things disabled because it's just not to my preference but like if, I think a few people you know may prefer this uh, there's also a future spell um, option here as well which I I haven't tested that yet but um, it's probably very useful for leveling so yeah it, it is a nice looking add-on but I do have some things disabled just because um, some things that you know I'm just very used to like some of the old older things and I just prefer them another great feature is this little button down here with the free circle you can click this and go along these are basically all the add-ons I have downloaded so I may as well talk about some of these add-ons actually because one of the um, Obviously, big parts of my unit uh, interface right now is Titan Panel. Titan Panel, tight, sorry, Titan Panel is primarily looked at as a leveling add-on, but I've decided to keep it because it is very useful, uh, mainly to track my durability and my ammo, the gold per hour, and actually my, my performance settings. So if I go to, you're probably wondering how do you basically disable the bar? It's actually pretty straightforward. Like, I'll go to the settings for Titan Panel and basically show you. If we go to the transparency settings here, obviously that's what it normally looks like, but I didn't like how that kind of conflicted with my micro bar here, and I generally just do not like it that much, so you can very easily just disable it. I also had it like below my chat box, chat box for a while as well, which is another great way to do it, but I couldn't figure out how to kind of make it, because um, it kind of conflicts with the reputation bar down here, which is another great feature I forgot to mention actually. This is my... This bar down here could be your XP bar, but it can also be your reputation, you know, tracker, which is pretty cool. So yeah, generally just, um, those are, the, I think those are the main add-ons. So I'll pause for a second, you know, to think of some more. Uh, well, while I'm here, like, I, I do have, like, a weapon swing timer and an energy tracker down here, and I've managed to make, basically, m integrate them into the interface. As you can see, this is very important information I need to keep track of and it's very well integrated into my interface to again like minimize space on the screen because like my old interface had like the you know a blue bar going across like in the middle of my character in the center of the screen I didn't like that too much because it was taking up too much space so right now it's just like just below the um, the spell icons here very out of the way and it's very easy to keep track of because again I just need it you know to keep track of like when I should use sensor strike and stuff like that. The last add-on that I can really talk about is my map add-on because it's a little bit unique um, because it has basically a zooming feature which I do quite like. Uh, you can zoom around here. Again like I do find this very useful and you can click and drag around. When I'm tracking certain quests or I'm trying to find like a chest or a node you know for mining or something like that then I, I can zoom in and get a little bit of a better look. This map uh, add-on is called Leatrix Maps. All the add-ons will be linked down in the description too. But anyway guys, that's pretty much where I'm going to end the video. Again, like people are basically just asking me a lot on my live streams how do I make my game look like this, so I thought I'd make a little video talking through like how I basically changed the way the Classic Wild looks. I do primarily use this interface essentially to, you know, when I'm doing like immersive leveling on my own, because obviously you do not need to know your position very well. You know very much when you're just doing some solo leveling so it's a great it's a great interface for that but again you probably want to tone tone it back a little bit for when it comes to raiding the, the ui itself is totally fine for raiding uh, you just have to definitely get used to like having your health bar at the bottom of the screen rather than you know in the default position but yeah you probably do want to turn the action cam off and not zoom in so much when you're doing some raiding but nonetheless like it is pretty cool and you know, you don't have to go for the action cam. I, you, I, I imagine, like, there's one thing from this uh, video that you've probably liked the look of, so hopefully um, hopefully this video has helped you out. Um, at the end of the day, when it comes to Guild Wars 2 interface, I it, it's definitely a lot to get used to uh, at, uh, at the beginning when I first downloaded it. I did find it kind of frustrating and stuff like that, but I definitely recommend to stick it out guys and just kind of put up a bit because it is a very rewarding add-on once you get used to it and I, I would just never go back to using the default WoW interface anymore and if, if Guild Wars 2 uh, interface is ever not supported for WoW I'm going to be pretty upset and uh, but oh well. My name is Metagoblin to my next video, ciao.